Hello, hello everyone. What is up? I am so excited to be back sharing with you guys tonight. Um, if you have struggled with yo-yo dieting, feeling restricted, not being able to stick to an eating plan because of feelings of deprivation or overeating, then this is for you, my friend. I am so pumped for tonight's topic because it is literally the kryptonite. It is the stumbling block that just, you know, in so many people's weight loss journey. So I'm pumped. I am talking about how to lose weight without restriction and deprivation. Say what? Yes, yes, it is true, it is possible. Um, let me say hello to a few people before I start. I see some people, hi Asma, thank you. Hi Ross, you guys are so great. Thank you for saying hi. Hi Marlene, hi Brenda. Okay, so, so good, thank you for tuning in. And if you are catching the replay, please let me know, say hi, tell me where you're watching from. I like getting to know you guys because I am here to serve you. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Linda. Fantastic. Um, so my name is Dr. Sasha. Hi, I am a weight loss physician and I am super passionate about mastering your mindset. Um, I am all about going next level in life and being everything that you can be. So hello. Hi, Andrean. So fun. Okay. Let's, let's, talk, let's talk about this. So how to lose weight without restriction and deprivation. I wanna set this up for you, okay? So let's say that you want to lose weight and you research some different dietary protocols and decide that you're going to follow a low carb eating plan. That's the eating plan that we will generally advise in our clinic, whether you're an omnivore, vegetarian, plant-based, whole foods, whatever it is. Low carb at its most simple form just means minimizing refined flour and sugar. Okay, so you start your low carb eating plan and you're avoiding the bread, the rice, the pasta, the sugar, your weight's coming down and things are going okay. But as this is happening, you're thinking how deprived you are, how you are so restricted, um, how everyone else is eating pasta, but you know you have to eat salad, and really this just sucks. So of course, one day you go out and you go on a pizza fest, followed by dessert and cookies and whatever, you know, some sort of overeating episode. Um, and the rest is history. So you decide, well, that diet, like low carb is way too restrictive for me. Um, and you vilify the diet, diets are bad, and diets don't work, right? True story, anyone else, anyone out there? <laughs> um, so let me ask you something. Was it the diet that was restrictive or was it your thinking and the story that your brain created that gave you the feelings of restriction and deprivation. I'm gonna pause right there, dramatic pause. So think about that for a second because deprivation is a feeling and feelings come from our thoughts. Following a particular eating plan, whatever eating plan it is that you choose to help you manage your weight and your health, that is a circumstance circumstances are neutral. The only reason you have feelings of being deprived and overly restricted is because of your thoughts, because that's the story that your brain is telling you. Okay, so maybe you don't believe me. Think for a moment, if you had never tasted bread, okay, let me see, like you've never had refined flour before. Maybe you grew up in the jungle and all you've eaten is vegetables and some wild animals. Um, and one day you come across someone who is having a slice of bread, you would not feel deprived because you've never tasted bread before. You, you don't know what you're missing. So my point with saying that is just to say that it is not your circumstance that generates those feelings of deprivation, it is only your thinking. Okay, now let me take a step back. I'm just looking at my notes. Let me take a step back and give you the definition of the word deprivation. Okay, deprivation is the lack or denial of something considered to be a necessity. So really take note of that qualifier, considered to be a necessity. So when you decide to manage your weight, there's likely going to be a denial of sugar, processed foods, maybe refined carbs. Um, 
And one of the, the reasons that feels like deprivation is because you consider those to be a necessity. Many people who, fall, who start a low carbohydrate diet will feel like they're not eating normally. But where does normal eating come from? In North America, um, no, our normal diet consists of somewhere in the range of 350 to 450 grams of carbohydrates a day, primarily refined carbohydrates, and it's very, very high in sugar. And it's a lot of processed food-like substance, substances, so not even whole foods. Um, but normal Canadians are overweight. So 61% of our population is overweight. And so it would certainly appear that our normal diet is not working for us. Let me give you a classic example, okay, of what normal looks like. So cereal for breakfast, right? The healthy start to everyone's day. It is very normal for us to eat cereal for breakfast, but where does this come from? Cereal is sugar in a bowl with milk. Um, it doesn't matter if the box says that it's whole grains or that it's protein enriched or that it's high in fiber, it is sugar in a bowl. Um, and who decided that that is normal eating? Well, the food industry decided that. You know, cereal was a created concept, um, but it's just been passed down from generation to generation to generation. And so we have this belief that cereal is a reasonable, um, you know, start to your day. So Google origin of cereal, New York Times, and take a look at the history of cereal. It's really interesting. So I'm explaining this because it is important to understand that we have beliefs about what normal eating is, but what is that based on? And maybe we need to discover a new normal, um, a new normal way of eating that is going to work better for our body and our health um, without us thinking that that's deprivation. So let's talk a little bit more generally about deprivation. So when you're trying to manage your weight, um, you're likely going to be more mindful of your food choices. Maybe you choose to forego the dessert um, after supper. Maybe avoiding you're avoiding certain trigger foods that cause overeating behaviors for you. If you focus your brain on everything you are giving up, that's going to feel a lot like deprivation and restriction. But if you focus on your brain on everything that you are getting, that same experience can be a whole lot more positive. Okay, so overeating and giving into food cravings happen, happens because food gives us pleasure. Okay, so flour and sugar in particular have a very strong dopamine effect in our reward brain. So we feel momentarily good. But the pleasure from food, and I invite you to try this out for yourself, the pleasure lasts only as long as the food is in your mouth. The second you swallow, that pleasure is gone. And then you need more. Um, your brain wants to focus, really, like focus in on how good that food is, how much pleasure you're gonna get in that moment, how yummy it is. Um, so if you choose not to eat food in that moment, your brain is gonna create this whole story about deprivation. But take a step back and look at the big picture. When you overeat foods that you know do not serve your body, what is the price tag? What is the cost that you're paying to eat those things that seem like too much deprivation to give up? Maybe in the short term, it's physical symptoms like bloating or discomfort or your pants are too tight. Um, maybe it's emotional like guilt and disappointment and you know um, frustration or anger with yourself. And then maybe in the long term, it's, it's worse. It's diabetes or it's heart disease or it's worsening joint pain. Or maybe it's not being able to engage in you know, the activities that you want to or life the way you want to. So perhaps that moment of pleasure is actually depriving you from the life and the health that you really want. So there's deprivation on both sides of the equation, but if we don't take an honest look at it, our brain will only focus on the deprivation of that present moment of desire. Okay, I wanna talk about urges. Um, because it's very likely that if you are trying to manage your weight, you're going to experience 
urges at some point. And Catherine did a really great job of giving you some tips on, on overcoming cravings a few weeks ago. So if you missed that, go back in our Facebook videos and you can, you can watch that one, it was great. So an urge is a wanting of food. And normal autopilot behavior is this. We get an urge to eat, we go and find the food, we eat the food, our brain gets me a measure of reward. The primal brain's focus is very much in the moment. It doesn't matter that the chocolate bar is not serving us and uh, um, serving our long-term health, it does the trick in that moment. So what would it look like to practice restraint? We, so this is what it would look like. So we get an urge, we feel the urge, we say no to the food, and now we feel very uncomfortable because we're having this urge that is just gonna sit there and it's gonna be present in our body and that is uncomfortable. So for some, that discomfort will be interpreted as deprivation. And for others, you know, that discomfort can actually provoke a lot of anxiety. So on a subconscious level, it's kind of like, you know, why should I go through this discomfort? I'm being deprived of pleasure right now, so this can't be right. I shouldn't be feeling this way. I should eat um, because life is all about pleasure. Uh, so rather than just learning to tolerate the discomfort of the urge, many people just give in to the food. But, you know, it's not deprivation, it's that we haven't learned to master our thinking and empower ourselves to tolerate that short-term discomfort and say no to immediate pleasure for a longer-term reward. So let's summarize. Deprivation and restriction are feelings. Feelings are rooted in our thinking. And mindset is everything in life. Master your thinking, you will master your life. Um, so now let me give you a few steps to overcome those deprivation thoughts. So number one, instead of focusing on what you're giving up, focus on what you're gaining. So what are you gaining by managing your eating, by choosing a nutritious eating plan, by practicing restraint? Instead of focusing on all the things you're saying no to, what are you saying yes to? Okay, that's number one. Number two is notice your thinking. If you're at a restaurant, for example, and everyone around you is eating a burger and fries and you're having the salmon and the side salad, what is your self-talk in that moment? I can tell you mine. I tell myself that I feel powerful uh, and I am man making a choice to care for myself um, that I love salmon and it's delicious. And I'm at peace with that decision. And that's really important too, because if you reluctantly make the healthier choice, but the whole time you're resenting the process and just wishing you had, you know, had the burger and fries, of course you're gonna feel a whole lot of deprivation. But if you decide, hey, you know, this is the choice that I'm making um, and because I care about me and I wanna honor me and I'm, I'm good with it, then that same experience can be really peaceful and way more enjoyable and it's not going to take that same amount of like muscling it with willpower. Number three, um, what are you making food to be? What is food for you? And then ask yourself if that's serving you. Okay, that's all I'm going to say on that one. Number four, develop your own personal health mantra. I've shared this before, but I like to say to myself, I wanna feel powerful and I can do hard things. So when I have an urge, I'll literally say to myself, I wanna feel powerful right now. And it helps me to practice restraint. So come up with your own personal health mantra. Number five, be okay with feeling un uncomfortable. This is such a big topic, like distress tolerance is such a big topic that I'm gonna do a whole Facebook Live on accepting discomfort, but um, just learn that it's actually okay to feel uncomfortable. Life does not have to be pleasurable 100% of the time. Um, and understanding that is really powerful because you know, we have this misunderstanding that life is supposed to be happy and pleasurable 100% of the time. And I actually think that that is the root of a lot of unhealthy behavior because it means we don't know how to experience unpleasant emotions. Okay, that's a total tangent. Um, I'm gonna share on that another day. Number six, explore your values, revisit them often, and know your vision. What are your personal core values that propel you forward in life? And what is the vision statement for your life? Just as businesses and companies will do like values exercises and they'll have vision statements, you should have one too. 
you know, they can help give you direction. Um, this is actually week one for a lot of our patients. Um, we have a whole like values and vision exercise and it's super, super powerful. And okay, last one, number seven, evaluate the price tag. So I said this before, but as you're considering your eating plan and what boundaries that you're choosing to put in place for your eating, consider what is the emotional, psychological, and physical price tag? What is the cost of those processed foods that you are saying no to? they come at a cost. So what is that cost to you? If you write it down and think about it, that may help strengthen that restraint muscle when it comes to urges. Okay, so those are my seven tips to help you overcome the deprivation thoughts. I'm just taking a look. So number one was, instead of focusing on what you're giving up, focus on what you're gaining. Number two, notice your thinking. Number three, what are you making food to be in your life? Number four, develop your own personal health mantra. Number five, be okay with feeling uncomfortable. It doesn't last forever. Number six, explore your values, revisit them and know your life vision. And number seven, evaluate the price tag. So as you can see, all of this is about mindset because the most critical factor to managing your weight, managing your life, managing your business, managing your relationships, whatever it is, is mindset. Mindset is literally everything. I am learn I'm learning so much about mindset. I'm like obsessed with it right now. Um, learning as much as I can about self growth and mastering your thoughts to serve you better. Um, we've, I've been teaching this in our coaching group on Fridays um, and it has been so transformative and powerful. We've been seeing so much breakthrough in people's lives uh, that I'm doing another round. So we're going to be doing this again starting next week. If you are one of my patients and you are a woman or you are one of my previous patients, um, this is for you. If you wanna join us, it's 12 weeks of um, coaching at noon on Fridays. So if you're interested in that, give me a DM. Sorry, gentlemen, it's only for ladies right now. All right, I hope that was helpful. If you benefit from this, please share. Um, it helps get the message out. I know this was a little long tonight, but it was a big topic. Thank you so much for listening. I will take um, like a few questions because I know I went really long, but if anyone has any questions, type them in quickly because there is a 30 second delay. So I'm just gonna watch out for some questions and I'll say hi to people while, while I'm looking. Hello, hi Annette. Thanks for watching. Hi Jen, hi Karen. Hi, Anna Maria. Hi, Amitav. Awesome, so, so good. All right. Hi, Margaret. So good, okay. I don't know if there are any questions because I don't know if I should just wait a couple minutes. Sometimes there's a delay. Perhaps not. All right, well, thank you guys for watching. This was a lot of fun. Hi, Kristen. I will see you guys next week. Have a great evening. Bye.